Hello, my name is Taylor Pettis and welcome to today's presentation, Intro to SEO, How to Generate Productive Organic Traffic. As we all know, Google is much more than a search engine and has become synonymous for searching anything on the web. So we know people are using Google to find the information they need and they're using it a lot. The question quickly becomes, will people find your content or your competitors the next time they Google? Today's presentation is designed to introduce you to SEO and we'll get this from Nate Plant, Senior SEO Strategist at 3 Deep Marketing. But before I introduce Nate, I want to cover just a few housekeeping items. First of all, we hope the presentation will be both informative and interactive. To help make it interactive, please share your comments and questions in the chat area of the webinar screen. And I'll do my best to help Nate answer your questions during the presentation, so keep them coming. The next item is we are recording today's webinar, and all of you will be emailed a copy following the event. So if you like what you see or want to share some of your cool new knowledge with your connections, please feel free to do so. And we'll also have a next level SEO webinar coming up next month. We'll make sure to notify you guys about that event as well. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Nate Plant, And I'm looking forward to learning from him today, as I always do, and hope you will enjoy his presentation as well. All right, thank you, Taylor. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Nate Plant. I am a senior SEO strategist here at 3D Marketing. Um, and I'm going to run you through just a, a few things um, on the 101 level of search engine optimization. So here's the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to run through a, a short introduction. Um, I'm going to relay what you should expect to get out of today's presentation. Um, and then we're going to go into kind of the nuts and bolts of how search engines work. Um, what is search engine optimization? and some foundational SEO elements um, that you can, uh, that will help you to optimize your site um, as well as on and off page basics. And then we'll, we'll end up with some questions today. So without further ado, here are the presenters. There's Taylor's um, handsome mug there on the left and mine on the right. Um, Taylor would love it if you reached out to him on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can do so via those links there. Um, my Twitter handle is, is below below my title there. And if you want to get a little bit more information uh, about search engine optimization from me, that link will take you to some of my blog posts on the 3D website. All right, so let's roll right in here. So does search engine optimization really matter? Well, I can tell you from a recent study by the Search Engine Journal that 79% of search engine users say that they always or frequently click on the natural search engine results. Um, those would be the organic results. So I guess that begs the question, what exactly is an organic result? Um, as you can see here from this screenshot, this is a typical um, search engine results page that you'd see. It's actually one that I see pretty frequently as I have three kids in search for daycare. So let's break it down. What do, are we looking at here? Well, number one at the top there, these are the ads or the shopping results. Um, these are what people pay for to be at the top of the search engine page. Down further, you have some local or map results. Um, there's an element of optimization that goes into gaining this position, um, and that's referred to as local SEO. We're not going to get too in deep into that today, but what we are going to talk about um, is traditional SEO, and that's what helps you to get this organic result on the first page. You can see way down there below everything else. Um, before we do, let's just kind of run through some organic search stats. So organic traffic accounts for up to 64% of all web tra website traffic. And this is um, the result of a study performed by a company called Conductor uh, a couple of years ago now. And I'll show you an example of what I mean there. Um, roughly 52,000 search queries happen on Google every single second across the world. That's uh, pretty astounding considering that when they started out it was about 10,000 searches a day. Um, but this translates into, if you do the math, about four and a half billion searches every single day. Um, and the source on this is internetlivestats.com. If you go to that URL down there at the bottom you can you can see it, what that looks like um, in, in real time. All right, as I mentioned before, organic search is the overall number one driver of website traffic. Conductor um, did this study uh, with sites that use their tool um, and from a usage perspective they found that it was uh, it was up to 64 percent of all traffic came in through organic sources um, and organic sources means via a search engine it could be Google could be Bing Yahoo 
I, a Yandex neighbor, whatever, um, whatever it may be. So in terms of click-through rate for organic results, this is another study done by Marketing Land, and this is really interesting stuff to me. So on a search engine results page on Google, you're going to have 10 results below the ads and below the local results. And so what does the click-through rate look like for each position? As you can see there, um, the position one has the highest click-through rate, um, and it goes down as you go down through the page. What's really interesting to me is if you look at, you know, positions 6 through 10, they have almost the same click-through rate as the entire second page of results. Um, and so what it's really saying here is that if you're not on the first page, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting people to click through to your site. So does search engine optimization really matter? Um, I think we can all agree that yes. The answer is definitely yes. Um, if you're not optimizing for search, you're already behind your competition. So what can you expect to get out of today? Um, number one is I hope I can give you a solid understanding of how search engines operate. And also, I want to teach you how to beat out your competition in the search engine results. I'm going to do so by providing some actionable, actionable tactics that you can implement on your site today. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to give you some tools, tools that I use on a daily basis uh, with my clients here that um, are, are accessible to you to help you implement optimizations on your website. So what did you search today? Um, this, is a, this is a pretty common image that most people see on a daily basis. Um, when you input a query, such as daycare, you see a result that comes out like this. A lot of people may think that, wow, 179 million results, uh, that's a lot of results, and it came back in under a second. Um, some people think that this happens in real time. In actuality, Google really is going out and, and pulling these pages into its index so it can get to them for quick retrieval when a new query comes in. And so if you think about it, Google is really just a big library of pages. And the way that you can access those pages or those books in that library is to just type your, type your search query in that search bar. So let me explain um, a little bit more visually about how search engines work. And this is kind of the nutshell version of it. Um, that search engines, whether it's Google, Bing, Yahoo, they have these spiders or crawlers or bots, as they're sometimes referred to, that go out and they crawl the web. Um, they crawl the web through links that they discover on websites. And so when a crawler comes to a page on your site, it takes notes. It, it's, it's categorizing the information there on various elements, such as page titles, um, description tags, navigation, the, the copy on the page, basically everything to learn exactly what your site is about and where to serve you up in a search engine results page. Then they consolidate their findings, categorize them in their index, and they do it all over again, day in and day out. Um, now how they categorize them is a little bit different um, depending on what search engine you're looking at. Google is slightly different from Bing, which is slightly different from Yahoo. Internationally speaking, um, there's other search engines that are more prominent uh, than Google or Bing, such as Yandex, Baidu, and Neighbor, and they each have their own search engine algorithm. But from a US perspective, here's what we're looking at, um, and from an SEO perspective, from, from what I do on a day-to-day -day basis when I talk about SEO with my clients, I'm predominantly talking about Google because it makes up about 64% of the search engine market share in the US. Um, you know, we don't, I don't want to discount Bing and Yahoo because they are actually increasing in market share year after year, um, but those are the big three. Everyone else makes up less than 3%, and, and by everybody else I mean things like AOL, remember that, yeah, it still exists, um, Ask Jeeves, and other search engine networks. All right, so it's important to note again that not all search results are organic. And I, I, I pointed this out before, but I want to show you this again. So on this specific search results page, there's a lot going on here. Um, but if you gray out the areas that aren't organic, you can kind of hone in and see those results that we're talking about um, when we're talking about optimizing your website for visibility in searches. So that ultimately is the question, what is SEO? Well, if you ask Wikipedia, it's going to give you this description. 
Search engine optimization is the process of affecting the visibility of a website or web page in a search engine's natural or unpaid results. Um, but to me, it's a little bit simpler than that. It's really two things. Number one, it's the practice of making your website as accessible as possible to search engines. And number two, it's ensuring that your website is as useful and relevant as possible to your current and prospective customers. So let me, let me describe this a different way. Think of your website like it's a house. Number one, you want to ensure that your house is accessible um, to your visitors and to yourself. And you do this um, through really the front door and the house's foundation. These are the basic elements that you need to build the rest of your house on. And then ensuring that it's and useful are all the other things. These are the fun, sexy things like what kind of furniture do you want? Um, what kind of windows are you going to have? What color is your house on the inside and the outside? and all the other things that, that you typically think about before you think about the foundation of your house on a daily basis. Very similar to how I think about search engine optimization. All right, so let's get into the course today, the basics here of SEO 101. This here's a visual of how we approach SEO at 3D. SEO 101 and what we're going to be talking about today is that ensuring that your site is accessible to search engines and human, views, human users. And that really happens down at that foundational level of the pyramid. These are the technical and structural factors of your website, as well as some of the on and off page factors that demonstrate relevance and authority. I want to walk you through um, a number of different examples here in this, in this layer. Up here at the top, this is the fun stuff. This is how SEO intersects with content strategy and content marketing. Um, in order to amplify your content that's on your site as effectively and efficiently as possible. And this is, as Taylor uh, alluded to earlier, this is the next installment of this webinar series that's going to happen next month um, from a number member, another member of the SEO team here. So uh, stay tuned for that email invite, and I do encourage you guys to follow up and, and watch that webinar as well. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, as a kind of a step-by-step -step basis. These technical and structural factors that are at the very bottom of the pyramid, these are the foundation of your house. What does it mean? What are they? And how can you impact search engine results? All right, so the goal here at this level is to ensure accessibility for search engines and users. Really, it's the foundation of your entire online presence. So it's really, really important to get this, these things right here. Um, and the good thing that regardless of what search engine we're talking about in the US, um, they have very clear guidelines for webmasters to follow in building sites, and they are very, very similar between Google, Bing, and Yahoo. So if you fix your site from the technical side and the structural side here, you're going to have great results across all the search, uh, the search engines. So what do we look for at this level? Well. Um, number one, can your entire website be crawled? That's pretty important. Can, is it accessible to the search engines? Um, and if it's accessible, is it properly indexed to the search engines? Uh, there's other things that come into account here, like website errors. Are there any errors on your site? And what's this page? What's the page load time um, of the pages on your website? All of these things are really important to look at at this level. So how can you do this? Um, there's a few, there's a couple really, really important files that you need to have on your site, the XML sitemap and a robust text file. Um, and I'm going to talk about exactly what these are in the next coming slides. You can use other tools out there to help you optimize your site um, in terms of getting rid of those errors and page speed optimization. And Google provides some really great tools to you in order for you to do so. And number one is Google Search Console. And this is really uh, the platform that Google uses to reach out to website owners to tell them to let them see information about their site. And number two is, is a page speed optimization tool that I'm going to talk about later as well, provided by Google, which provides a prioritized roadmap for any website owner to follow if they want to improve their page speed. All right, so what to avoid here? There's a lot of different ways you can develop a website, um, but if you want to develop a website with SEO kind of in the front of your mind, don't develop it in Flash. <laughs> Flash is, is, a, is a program that search engines have a real hard time understanding. In fact, Google's Chrome browser is, is actually not going to support Flash moving forward because it, it doesn't typically render on, on mobile devices and, and the mobile landscape is really important. 
Um, iframes, this is another development tactic that you want to avoid. Um, essentially, anything that's held within an iframe cannot be crawled or seen by the search engine spiders. Um, and, and a real simple one is don't block your site. And, and people don't do this on purpose, but I see it a lot that some or all of the site is blocked um, inadvertently in the robust text file. So what do I mean? Here's an example of, of what this looks like. And all it takes is one little character to allow your site to not be crawled. Um, so on the left there, this is the syntax you want to use to allow search engines full access to your site. Um, it's disallow and then nothing. Essentially, you're saying, hey, Google, when you come to my site, don't disallow anything. I know that sounds like a double negative, but that is, again, the proper syntax to use in your robust text file. On the right, this is the not good version. Um, it's saying, hey, Google, when you come to my site, disallow everything. So don't crawl any of my pages and don't eat don't get those into your index. That's, that's problematic. Um, and if this one little line is, is incorrectly written in that file, um, you're going to have a world of hurt when it comes to SEO. But the good news is it's really easy to fix. So robots text file, what is it? This is what I was talking about earlier. Um, this is the directive for all bots visiting your site, whether it's a search engine or another crawler that's out there crawling your site. It tells them what URLs to crawl or not crawl. For example, if you look at this um, Nike robots text file, uh, I love it with that little Easter egg, just crawl it. I think that's, that's kind of neat and on brand. But essentially what it's saying is that, hey, user agent, that's saying, hey, crawler or bot, when you visit the site, disallow these categories. So forward slash Nike golf, forward slash global. Anything that is within that file structure, don't crawl those pages along with you know, everything that, that is there below it there. Um, and what this does is it, it tells the search engines to crawl only the valuable content on your site, the content that you want them to crawl and index. Um, and there may be some content that you just you don't need them to crawl. It could be something that, for example, something that's behind like a login screen. If you have a, you know, a user login portal or something on your website, you may not want search engines to crawl through that or try to crawl through that. And again, this is a simple, simple file. It's, it's a text file. It can be created on your computer with Notepad and uploaded to your site fairly easily. If you use a CMS like WordPress, for an example, um, there's plugins that enable you to, to edit this file really, really easily. Um, Yoast is a great one that I've used in the past. Um, here's a little pro tip. So, robots text file, Google within Search Console provides a testing tool for your robots text file. Um, and so if you log in and verify your website in Google Search Console and you navigate to the robots text tester, you can input URLs within your site to see whether or not they're accessible to search engines or to crawlers. Um, and you can test any all pages, really, if you'd like to. Um, I use this pretty frequently. Um, it's a really nice tool. Uh, so I recommend that you sign up for Search Console number one and number two, use this tool to, to test your site against its robots text file. Um, the next file that I had talked about that's really important is an XML sitemap. So the XML sitemap, what it is, is it's a map of your entire website, and it enables the search engines to efficiently crawl and index your site. Um, think of it like a directory. So if you go to a big office building the, and you're looking for a, a certain office location, uh, you're going to go probably first to the directory. It's going to help you to more efficiently get to where you're going rather than knocking on every door in that 10-story building. That's what this does for Google and other search engines. It essentially says, here's my directory. What are you looking for? Here's how to get to it as quick as possible. Important to have it. Um, uh, and again, fairly easy to create. So there's various tools out there that can help you generate an accurate, up-to-date sitemap. Um, if you if you have a site that has a static sitemap and it's, you don't update your content very often, um, Screaming Frog Spider is a great tool that I use to crawl sites, but it also outputs sitemaps for that site, and you can generate that really easily with that tool. There's also plugins. I mentioned Yoast before for robots text, but it's also a great uh, tool to use for your sitemap. It can actually automatically update your sitemap as you add new pages or new blog posts to your site 
so you don't ever have to think about it. Um, I highly recommend going that way if you have, uh, you know, for example, a WordPress site. And there's other web-based web sitemap generators out there. Um, I've used xmlsitemaps.com in the past. They're okay, but again, if you have a, the opportunity to, to get a plugin, I would go that route. All right, Google Search Console. I mentioned this before. Um, this is a free resource. This is really something that if you own a website, go verify it right away. Um, Google's gonna provide you really valuable information about how it's crawling your site, how it's indexing your site, whether or not it's finding errors, what types of backlinks are going to your site. Almost anything that you really wanna know about your site, you can find through Search Console. That's the link there. Um, if you haven't already uh, done this, go, go there and verify your site. All right, I talked about speed uh, briefly up front and why does speed matter? Well, um, in 2014, mobile usage, internet mobile usage actually overtook desktop usage. And last year, the mobile searches on Google overtook desktop searches on Google. And it's never ever gonna go back the other way. Um, and one of the biggest opportunities for a site is to optimize the speed for mobile devices. If you think about it, your mobile device is working off a network. AT&T, AT &T, Sprint, Verizon, whatever it is your carrier is, and you may not always be hardwired, you may not always have the best connection speed. Optimizing your pages um, and minimizing you know, image files and, and things like that is gonna help your site perform better in these mobile results. Um, mobile Geddon happened back last year where Google kind of drew a line in the sand and said, hey, you know, every site needs to be mobile friendly. They provided a mobile friendly um, testing tool and so that actually in increased mobile friendliness of, of sites in general um, by, by about 20%, if, if I remember the number right. So um, they're kind of kicking everybody in the butt and saying, hey, get, get your mobile site in, in order. And it worked. Um, here's a, uh, a tool I had mentioned earlier. It's the Google Page Speed Insights tool. And this is the one that um, provides you that prioritized roadmap of how to fix speed issues on your pages. And so if you go to that URL there, and again, we'll provide this um, deck out to the attendees of this program so you don't have to scramble to write that URL down. Um, you'll be provided that in an email afterwards. Um, but if you go there, input your, your domain URL and hit analyze, and it's gonna say, okay, here's all the things that you should, you should fix right away. Here's what you should consider fixing across both desktop and mobile sites. So really valuable resource provided by Google for free. All right, moving up the pyramid here, we're, we're, we're past the technical and structural factors. Now we're looking at those on and off page factors that help demonstrate that relevance and authority. And that's really the goal here when we talk about optimization at this level. Um, search engines want to provide users with search results that are relevant to the query and authoritative in nature. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by relevant and authoritative later. Um, and then this is where we, we allow search engines or make search engines in to fully understand what the pages of our website are about. And we do this through on-page and off-page SEO. So what do I mean by on-page? Well, on-page SEO refers to the factors that you can optimize and control directly on your website. So example of these factors are the metadata. Um, those are page titles, meta descriptions, heading tags, etc. cetera. Um, internal link and the structure of your site, how it's built the content on your pages, and then some of those technical and structural things that you can um, fix either on your website or on your server. Off-page SEO. This refers to factors that are typically outside of your control on other websites. So some examples here are inbound links to your site from other websites, um, social media, mentions of your brand, um, and local directories, especially within the local SEO um, practice of SEO. So what to look, for, what to look for here? Um, number one, are all your on-page elements optimized? This is really important to do um, for, for on-page elements. Your page needs to be, to be targeting a theme. And, and really you want to think about one page, one theme, or one page, one purpose on your website. Um, and you can take a look here at what keywords you're ranking for. This is going to help you understand a little bit more about your site. Who is linking to you and who is linking to your, to your competitors? So when I talk about on-page elements that need to be optimized, really I'm talking about these things. Um, your, number one, your URL, um, your page title, your heading tags, your meta description, page copy, and then alternative image text. It's a lot of words, 
but it's going to look better if I show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here's a random page taken from the Dr. Brown's website on their deluxe bottle warmer, which is a great product. Um, number one, page title. That's right at the, at the top there. Um, that's a little tab in your browser that has that has words in it. This is your page title, and it's coded within the HTML HTML of your page, telling search engines and browsers this is what you want to display. Um, we want these to be unique and descriptive. This is the number one most important metadata element that you can optimize on your pages to have a positive effect on SEO. So the goal here is you want to target uh, a keyword theme that. Um, is descriptive and unique. Next on down the page, the URL. This is also really important. It needs to be descriptive and readable by both humans and search engines. And I'll show you a, a good and a bad example in the next coming slides. Uh, H1 heading. So this is the primary heading tag with on the, that's on that page. And it's typically outlining what the main topic of that page is. It should be unique and descriptive on each page. The image alternative text next up. Every image should have an alternative text, and this is good because number one, search engines don't see images like you and I do, like humans do. We have to tell them what they're about, um, and we do so through the alternative image text. And number two, this is uh, an accessibility concern. So somebody comes to your site with a screen reader, for example, um, it's going to read what that alt text is and describe what that image is to someone that has. Uh, 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 seeing a sight disability. Um, then next up are subheadings. So these could be, you know, H2s, H3s, all the way through H6s. Um, these should be targeted subtopics within that page theme. So this is a good example of, you know, deluxe bottle warmer, how it works. That's an extension of what that page topic is, is about and adds more value to a user of that page. And then finally, your page copy. This should be descriptive, unique, and keyword rich here. Um, and you want to use the words that help you describe in conversational English or whatever language it is that you are writing your website in um, to your user what that page topic is. Don't overstuff keywords. Um, talk conversationally on your pages. All right. So as as, uh, as I promised you, I'm going to have some examples of some good and some bad um, on-page elements. So number one here, page titles. For this Google search, One Piece Pacifiers, a good example is this page title. It is right on, One Piece Pacifiers, and then the brand, the website brand is, is following it, trailing it, diapers.com. Um, as a result, this is the number one organic result that comes up for this query. A bad example is this for this query, One Piece Pacifiers, this page title, sue the pacifier and then probably the part number or something there um, followed by the brand. Um, unfortunately, it's not descriptive enough to the search engine to pull back that as a result on the first page and as a result of that, it's the organic result number 32. So it's, it's buried deep um, in, the, in the pages of, of the search results. Um, URL structure, so a good and a bad example here. We'll take that same query, one piece pacifiers, and let's look at a good result. This is a great result. Drugstore.com um, forward slash, that must be uh, some sort of category there, but one piece silicone pacifier.html. It's descriptive, um, it's readable by humans and search engines, and as a result, it is on the first page, a little bit lower, result number nine, but still on the first page. Um, bad example is this, and uh, this page is forward slash shop forward slash index.php um, parameter route equals product category path. You know, this is all, you know, in, in probably an internal database pulling a result and trying to serve it um, into a page, into a URL. Um, but unfortunately, as a result, it's organic result number 94. Not many people are going to go 10 pages deep to find what they're looking for. Um, on, a, on a, a typical searcher won't, so I would recommend optimization of this URL. All right, so meta descriptions I mentioned as well. What are they? What, what to look for? So these are meta descriptions here. Um, meta descriptions are only visible um, 
to the searcher on a search, search engine results page, but they're important to optimize because they're essentially the elevator pitch for that page in a search result. Um, you want to entice users to click on your result over your competitor's result, and you can do so by writing a really compelling meta description. All right, I mentioned before, mobile is important. Um, and, and here's one of the reasons why. So let's, let's look at the same query um, on two different devices. This is the desktop results for the query best baby carrier. And that first result there um, is babygearlab.com best baby carrier. Um, it's a pretty well optimized page, especially for that, that search query. Um, and as a result, it's the number one uh, organic uh, result on the SERP. Now, if you go on mobile, we get a little bit different uh, set of results here. And this is because Google has got actually two different algorithms running, one for a desktop device and one for a mobile device. And so their mobile version of this page isn't as well optimized. Um, and as a result, it gets knocked down to position number two. And this is not, you know, most times you're not going to see a too, too much of a difference. Um, but it is interesting to note that, that because of the, the lack of optimization from a mobile standpoint, Google's determined that you know, babylist.com or whatever it is above it is a better choice um, to serve up in that, for that same query on a mobile device. All right, I mentioned that um, you know, at, this, at this level of the pyramid, you want to look for what keywords you rank for. So how do we do this? First of all, I'm going to lay some ground rules. Don't Google yourself. Um, there's a lot of reasons why not, but primary is that personalization happens on your device. And so if you're constantly clicking on a competitor, you're going to see competitors um, coming up before your site, and you're going to go crazy. Um, use a keyword tracking tool. Uh, I like to use SEMrush. Um, they have a freemium model, so meaning you can get limited data um, for a free membership, but if you pay a little bit more a month, you can get a lot more data from them. And Bright Local, I use this here at, at 3 Deep for our local SEO clients. It's a paid tool, but it's really invaluable when you're looking at um, location-specific uh, rankings and, and position tracking for local SEO keywords. Um, here's an example of the SEMrush tool um, and what you can expect to find when you're looking at it. Um, so this is, uh, I pulled in the domain babiesrus.com just to take a look at what they're, they're ranking for. And it tells me right here that in, for their organic search positions, there's about 22,000 keywords that it's, it's picking up that baby, Babies R Us is ranking for. Here's the top. Here's the top ones here. And so you can just you know, scroll down through the list. This is um, kind of a truncated uh, look at it here. Um, but it does, you can't get access to every single one of those, those keywords. All right, so we're moving off of the on-page to the off-page SEO elements. So some of the things that we're talking about here are backlinks, um, the anchor text of those backlinks, and then citations or mentions of your, your brand or website um, throughout the Internet. So backlinks, what are we talking about? Well, there's two types of, of links when we talk about backlinks. There's internal and external. We're focusing here on the external backlinks because these are the links to your site um, from another site out there. Uh, they are both useful in, but for different reasons and, and for the reasons of off pages, we're looking at the external ones here. So how do they help you? Um, they act like votes for pages on your site. It's essentially saying, you know, I'm website B and I vote for website A because they have a really great product or content or whatever it is. But that's their vote. Um, and, and Google and other search engines take note of this vote and take it into consideration when, when ranking a site in a search engine results page. So generally speaking, the more links you have from authoritative sources, the more trusted and, and better your pages will rank. And by authoritative sources, I mean um, you know, websites that have some authority. A good example of a really authoritative source is Wikipedia. Um, you know, on a scale from 0 to 100, their authoritativeness is 100. Um, you know, typically you're going to have um, links from sites anywhere along that spectrum, um, but but generally the more quality website or more quality backlinks you have, um, the better your pages will rank. So, what are quality web websites? Well, 
Number one is, you know, for example, a news site. Say there is a, a news article came out and they link back to your product or to your pages because you were mentioned in it. That's a great link. It's relevant. It's useful to, to visitors. Um, and it's a, it's a good backlink for you. Another one is, you know, for example, a retail site. Say you're a distributor or a manufacturer and you sell your product through retailers and they link back to your pages that have more information about the products for the users. That's a good link too. Maybe there's an industry blog out there that talks about how great your product or service is and they link back to your website um, and that's a good link as well. Um, what's not a good link is a shady link or a shady site linking back to you. Um, there has been um, updates to the Google algorithm over the years because they understand that various people understand that links equal rankings and so they would just go out and get a whole bunch of links from sites that weren't relevant, that weren't useful, um, they really had nothing to do with these pages. Google's and other search engines have been, have been uh, getting, the, getting privy to this and are taking actions against sites that are doing this type of behavior in an attempt to manipulate their search engine rankings. Um, in fact, Yandex, the Russian site, completely eliminated links um, from its ranking algorithm for almost an entire year um, to work on kind of the back-end engine and when they came back online links have both a positive and a negative ranking factor so they understand what sites are out there that are participating in this manipulative behavior and that they see a link from that that's a negative ranking factor um, and which is interesting within their algorithm so moving on from links uh, is the link anchor text so the words used in the anchor text which are those blue underlined words that you see typically on a link helps they help search engines understand what that page is about um, not just search engines but also users uh, if they click on a link they that says you know for example strollers and they would expect to land on a page that's about strollers so if that's what your site is about try to use that anchor text um, it would be preferable over click here it's pretty generic um, not great and it does have a, a low a low signal to the search engines that you know, this page is about this type of topic. All right, so who's linking to you? Um, this is important to know, you know, as, as I mentioned before, for, for a number of different reasons. If you've got great links, awesome. If you've got shady links, not so great. Let's figure that out. Um, so how do you do that? You conduct a backlink audit. Um, open up your Google Search Console again. Um, that's your trusty tool that you're going to want to go to every day. Navigate to the links to your site section. And that's where you're going to find out, number one, who links the most. Um, and number two, what content is linked to the most. So what pages are getting the most inbound links. Um, a little pro tip here for you guys out there. This is going to help you to inform future content. By that I mean if you have um, a blog post that's getting a lot of links, that's a, probably a good indicator that people are interested in that topic or maybe how that blog post is written. Maybe it's like a, you know, a top 10 reasons for X, Y, Z. Um, maybe that type of post is going to perform really well. And so creating more of that is going to help you generate more organic links to your site. All right, I mentioned that you also want to see who's linking to your competitors. So you can conduct a competitive link analysis and, and you have to use a different tool here because you don't have access to the Search Console for your competitors. Um, you want to use a tool called Open Site Explorer and this is by a company called Moz. They have a whole bunch of SEO tools. I highly recommend them if you're just starting out and you want a little bit of additional help. They're great. Uh, but this tool specifically is going to um, help you find out who's linking to your competitors. All you do is you put your competitor's domain into the search bar um, and then you can dig through their backlink profile. Uh, why do you want to do that? It's because it can help you identify where you can acquire some of the same links as your competitors to even the playing field um, when it comes to backlinks. Uh, it's important to do um, a little bit more advanced than just looking through your search console, but I highly recommend it. And this tool is a freemium as well, um, meaning you can get some information for free. All right, citations. Um, I, I mentioned these are really important for local SEO, and this is about as deep into local SEO as I'm going to go today. Um, but what they are are essentially a mention of your brand on another site, like a listing directory. And by listing directory, I mean something like Yelp um, or Hot Frog or City Search. And here's an example of a City Search result page. And each one of those, one through four, there are citations for those for those websites or for those businesses. 
Um, the biggest thing that you want to look for here is that they maintain consistency and accuracy, um, especially if you're a brick and mortar business that serves people from its location, name, address, phone number. Um, just think of, think of NAP, NAP, that's the, uh, keep that in the back of your mind. These need to be consistent across all the citations. Um, another tool you can do is here to uh, check it out from Moz, again, great resource um, for people with websites is Moz Local. Um, you can check it, check out your 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 URL. It's going to say, "Hey, we looked across the top 15 citation sources for your site. Here's your score. Here's what you need to do to get to 90 or 100 percent." So, we're moving on to review here. Almost at the end. Um, number one, if done right, SEO is a distinct competitive advantage. Um, but to do it right, you need to get the foundation right first and then optimize your pages. After that, you've, you've optimized everything you control. You can optimize your off-page presence and move up the pyramid. So again, this is what we talked about today, technical and structural factors, some of those on and off-page factors that help um, to de demonstrate relevance and authority. Um, what we're going to be talking about next month is the fun stuff. This is the content strategy and content marketing and ensuring that your site is relevant and useful to your visitors. I want to point out here though that once you get to the top of the pyramid, you're not done. There's always measurement, testing, and improvement that can happen. So realistically, um, you're always going to be going through these cycles where, where you're adding new content or removing content. And there's important things that you need to do from a technical standpoint there, um, but also optimization at the content level um, to that to that to those new pages to help them have uh, the best results possible. So. I want to thank you guys for sticking around. I'm going to open it up for questions right now. Um, again, we are going to provide this, uh, this, this deck to you guys. Um, there's an appendix here that's got links to all the tools mentioned, so you can just simply click in there um, and, and go right to those pages. So uh, without further ado, I'll open it up. Taylor. Yeah, thank you, Nate, for the presentation there. Um, it's very insightful. I know I'm walking away having learned a few new things. Um, I also want to thank you for all your time and all of you for attending today. Uh, if you do have some questions, uh, please do type them in the chat field right now. We did receive a couple um, you know, throughout the presentation. We'll go back and we'll answer. Um, while I wait for a couple more questions to come in, I will uh, share with you that Nate and his team are offering a free SEO scan for qualified companies. So if you're interested in seeing how your website performs in the SEO world, uh, it's a great offer from uh, his team. Uh, we'll send out a link on how you can register to have your, your site uh, uh, checked out. Um, while we dig into the questions, here's one that, uh, that came up throughout the presentation that, that I kind of liked was, uh, Bing's market share is increasing. Is SEO strategies the same on Bing as they are on Google? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, they're similar. In the, in the fact that when you're looking at it from that technical and structural level, it's almost identical. Bing says you gotta you gotta have an accessible website. Um, we gotta be able to crawl it. We gotta be able to index it. Um, where it differs is a little bit in, in its in its ranking algorithm. Bing relies a little bit more heavily on social factors than Google does. Google's actually said that social doesn't account into its ranking algorithm, um, but Bing says yeah no we use social factors so. If, if something's more popular, popular socially, it's probably going to be more relevant to somebody searching. So that's really the, the main differentiator there. Um, th there's obviously a, a number of different things. Google has you know 10,000 sub ranking factors compared to Bing's you know little over a thousand. So um, yeah, Google's just more sophisticated, um, and Bing relies more on social. Wonderful. So uh, here's a question: If we're hiring someone to handle optimization for our site. How much do you recommend that we still check on these technical elements ourselves? The way that I understand this is it sounds like they're a brand who's hiring an outside agency. So how much should the agency complete and what should the brand itself complete? That's a good question. Um, I would say that if you're hiring somebody to help optimize your site, um, you want to have the foundation fixed it before. So when I hear somebody's optimizing my site, it means that, you know, to me it means that they're maybe going in and, and optimizing some page level things like you know titles and meta descriptions maybe they're writing some copy um, maybe they're 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 doing a backlink acquisition campaign um, but the really important thing is to get that foundation right so that those optimization tactics um, are enhancing the visibility enough so if you have that foundation right um, 
then all of those optimi optimization tactics are going to have a more profound effect on your website. Um, so in terms of checking into it, I would say sit down with your agency um, and, and just and build a plan and, and have checks and balances at each at each um, maybe each month, maybe your monthly meeting. Hey, you know, are these things fixed? What's priority for next month? Um, and then moving forward, how is that reported on? So just having a good plan in place is 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 key for checking it. Wonderful. That's a, a good answer towards that question. Uh, you talked a little bit about mobile and the increase in mobile usage. Uh, question here related towards that. Is there a different strategy that I should use for mobile search, or is there a second strategy, I guess, do you have to do a uh, separate strategy for, for desktop and a separate strategy for mobile? Another great question. Um, so what there, there's a number of different ways that you can have a mobile site. Um, the preferred way for most search engines, or what they say is preferred, is to have a res what's called a responsive site. So that means one URL, same content to both mobile and desktop users. Um, you can have also a separate mobile site, um, which is typically you'll see like m dot um, or or something along those lines, m dot domain dot com, for example. Um, and then the third way is serving different content via um, the header of the page, the HTTP header. It's called the very header mode. Um, so when you have a, a, a different mobile site, think different URL, same content, and then the, the very header option, which is think same URL, different content. There's different optimization tactics that you need to, um, to, to put within the pages of your website to have the best possible performance in both the mobile and desktop um, algorithms. And without getting into do too much detail there, um, that's kind of a high level view of it. I would recommend going responsive, um, but again, if you go that route and you have a lot of you know, things like images and, and, and JavaScript files on a page, you're going to have to do some additional optimization to minimize them um, for mobile devices. So you said don't Google ourselves. Is there a tool that I can use that will help me see what others might see when they Google me? Kind of an interesting question. Yeah. I'm not sure if there is a, a tool. Yeah, no, I mentioned um, SEMrush is my preferred tool there. Um, it, it's really reasonably, reasonably priced for um, the, the paid model of it. Um, and what you can do is you can actually, you'll see for you know, each keyword where you're ranking. And you can click into it, and you can see the actual search engine results page where it, it took note of your position. And so that's really the best way to get a non-personalized, non-location specific result is to use a tool, tool like that and to drill down into what that result looks like. Wonderful. I think a good answer to a tricky question. Uh, I know Google makes regular changes. Uh, as part of these changes, are keywords dead as an SEO strategy? Uh, well, keyword research is still really important when you're talking about building new content. Um, you need to understand what, why, and how people are searching. Um, keywords, uh, let's just take it one step back here. So there, there's a thing, a, a meta, metadata thing called a meta keywords tag that you can put on every page of your website. That is dead. If you're talking about keywords in that respect, that's dead. Um, for a while, Google and other search engines were using that to help categorize that pages, that, that page or pages. Um, however, people were over-utilizing it, um, manipulating the search engines that way. So they said, you know what, we're just going to forget about that, that piece of metadata there. Um, but from a research standpoint and understanding how users search, keyword research is super important. Um, however, like I mentioned, there's a lot of searches that happen on Google every day. Like I said, you know, four and a half billion, roughly. Um, of those, 115 million brand new searches happen on Google every single day. So these are keywords that are being searched that have never in the history of the internet been searched before. And that's astounding. So if you think about just honing in on like a subset of like 10 or 12 keywords, you're really missing the forest for the trees. Um, and you need to broaden out um, your approach to writing content and performing some of this research. All right, and so I think we have time for just one more here. 
Uh, and uh, this is one that caught my attention. So image titles and descriptions, do they enhance SEO value or is it more for a different reason? Yeah, you know, the number one um, thing that I always recommend is that alt text um, that's associated with the image. Um, titles and descriptions um, can also be valuable too. Um, to my knowledge, they're not, they don't have a direct effect on SEO like the alternative image text that's coded into that image does. Um, but they do help out, again, with that accessibility of um, people with screen readers understanding more about the context of that image within, within the page. Wonderful. So thank you again for your time today, Nate. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for attending. Hope that uh, you'll consider Nate's offer to have him check out your website if you're interested. Um, other than that, I think he shared our information, both uh, email, uh, Twitter, all those other good things, too. So hopefully you guys will connect with us if you have additional questions in the future. And thank you again, Nate. Yeah, and thank you, everybody, for, for coming. I, I really appreciate your time. And I hopefully you learned a, lot of, a couple of things along the way. Thank you.